Alright, so in the previous video, I showed you the toy company example, and so I and so now I want to kind of just kind of kind of break it apart and demonstrate and kind of just point out what the different components of a linear programming model are. So in the toy company example, we've got where we define S is the number of soldiers produced and the number of trains. These S and T are what we call decision variables, and decision variables are basically um, basically the values of which when we solve the model. We are gonna we're gonna decide what those variables are gonna be in order to obtain our optimal solution. the The next one, the max three t plus two s, is our objective function because it represents what we want to uh, maximize or minimize. So in this case, if you remember the toy company scenario, we want to maximize our profit. So therefore, our objective function represents to, represents. Uh, I guess the mathematical way of representing the profit, which is the three t plus two s, and the max stands for maximize. Now the the last three equations are what we call constraints, and essentially you can think of constraints as basically restricting, like say, the range of values that your s and t can be. So they are constraining the range of values for s and t in that sense. So, and in this case, the constraints that you see for linear programming models, they're represented by linear equations and or linear inequalities and uh that's that and usually you you will have and for much larger models you will have like a whole bunch of them so i just want to scroll back up to kind of just like the, the more formal definitions for all of them so for the first one decision variables are unknown numbers represented by lowercase letters which are determined by solving the model so once we figure out how to solve those models then the decision variables will be assigned a specific number so Usually, and when you're modeling, what one thing you need actually need to decide is what the decision variables are going to be. And for most of the most of the simple scenarios in here, they usually represent something to be deduced, some, sorry, something to be produced or some way of allocating resources. So there are there are more complicated examples that we will show later in the subject. But for now, the, these are what decision variables can be. Now, there's a little additional thing called parameters, and parameters are kind of more like um, the, well, firstly, we re represent them in a model by large capital letters, and they are usually meant to be placeholders for numbers that are for, like, say, data that's meant to be there, but the data may not necessarily be consistent across, say, like, um, every application of the model. So, we won't necessarily, we, for, at least for these early examples, we won't be using parameters as much, but for some of the later models, when we do, like, say, much, much larger examples, or when we do integer programming, chances are that we will start look start looking at some parameters where once we implement the model they'll be replaced with actual numbers now the objective function is as i said a function that represents the measure to be maximized or minimized doesn't get any simpler than that uh it is possible for a model to have multiple objectives and it is also possible for linear programming models and models in general not to have an objective function and these are what we call constraint satisfaction problems however we will not be looking at them in this course but kind of just worth letting you know that they do exist so and the last one is constraints as i've said before they represent a restriction on our decision variables and usually the constraints represent a restriction in terms of say the resources like say we have we have only this much amount of wood that we could use to build our soldiers and trains that's a constraint and we only have this many hours of labor of which we want to build our wooden trains and soldiers. That's also a constraint. So usually constraints are in this in the toy company scenario, they're, they're the constraints of resources. But once again, in different scenarios, there will also be constraints in terms of like not necessarily resources, but depending on the context of the problem, the constraints can actually be like something completely different or something else. So. That's all the components of a linear programming model. We'll start look in the next video. We'll start looking into how to draw them and how to solve them using the graphical method.